titled Confidence. Everybody say confidence. The word confidence is, is actually made up of two words. Number one, con. The word con, uh, and, and it's made up also of a word that's fado, which means faith. So uh, actually, con means with, and fiedo, it means faith. So actually, the meaning of the word confidence means living with faith. Everybody say living with faith. That's the meaning of confidence, living with faith. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, now the just shall what? Live by faith. Everybody say live by faith. Amen. But if any man draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. To live by faith is to live with confidence. Confidence is assurance. Everybody say assurance. But we got to have assurance. Amen. To have confidence, to have faith. Amen. It means to have trust. Amen. Confidence is keeping a cool head under pressure. Somebody help us tonight. Somebody say, help us, oh, Lord, to stay cool under pressure. Confidence is knowing that God is who he says he is and that God's going to do what God says he's going to do. You won't back off of it. You won't take no for an answer. You know that God, if God said it, if God decreed it, then it's yours. Somebody lift your hand now and say, it's mine. If God said it, if, it's, if God said it, it's yours. If you'll have confidence in it, if you'll have faith in it, Amen. The Bible says over in the book of Second John, or First John, chapter five, verse fourteen and fifteen, it says, "This is the confidence. This is the confidence that when we that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, here's where a lot of people miss it. They don't ask according to His will, but if you ask according to His will, He heareth us." And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever, somebody put your finger right there on that if you can and say whatsoever. Somebody shout whatsoever. Thank God. God said whatsoever we ask. You can't ask too big for God. Help me preach. You can't ask too small for God. God says if you can find it in the word, then it's yours. Amen, whatsoever we ask, we know. There it is. We have confidence. We have faith in it. We know that we have the request or the potentials. Everybody say the potential. Our request that we desired of him. This means that when we come to God with faith, mm -mm, when we come to God with confidence, Amen, with the potential, with the request that's based on the word of God, based upon his will. Amen, anything that he promised, we can ask for it. And God who cannot lie, somebody shout, he cannot lie. He cannot lie. Thank God he said, uh, thank God, a God who cannot lie. God who watches over his word. Amen, promise that if we have confidence, if we come before him with faith, we need to come before him, amen, crying and boring tears. Come on, that don't move God. What moves God is when we're full of faith. What moves God when you're full of confidence? What moves God when you believe the word of God and you, you, you bring your petition before him based on the word, then God will bring it to pass. But you've got to have faith. We can have anything we ask for. If it's based on the word. But the key is to have confidence. The key is to come with faith. Somebody thank him tonight. Lord God, build our faith, build our faith. The scriptures gives us example after example of people who receive miracles by having confidence in God and his word. Noah with faith. Noah, with confidence, built an ark in a time where there'd never been a raindrop. 
Can you imagine being out there building an ark, building it, build it big enough to, for all the animals in the entire world to get uh, to them on that ark? Can you imagine uh, what people were thinking about him? But you know what he did? He built it based upon the confidence that he had in what God said. Mm. How many's got faith, got confidence in what God says in his word? Well, anything you find in here, it's yours. Come on. Somebody shout amen. If you can find it in here, it's yours. Healing's yours. The blessing's yours. Thank God. Victory's yours. He had confidence that God would send enough water that that big vessel would float one day. And God did it. Somebody hit me preach in this house. Now, I'm telling you, it didn't happen overnight. I believe it was about 115 years and oil knocked uh, that wood together, pitched and tired and, amen, and, and carried lumber to that big vessel. Amen, it didn't happen overnight. Sometimes miracles don't happen overnight, but if you'll keep the faith sooner or later, it'll come to pass what you're building on. One day God told Abraham that, that his wife, Sarah, was going to have a baby. That, that announcement made Sarah life. When Sarah heard it, she was an old woman and past having babies anyway, and she started laughing about it. Amen, but Abraham, amen, Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham didn't laugh about it. Amen, Abraham overlooked her laugh and let God's promises settle down in her heart. I said that to say this, don't matter if your own wife laughs at you. Don't matter if your own husband laughs at you. Come on, don't matter if your children laughs at you. Don't matter if everybody in the community's laughing at you. If God gave you a word, hallelujah, you ought to lift up your hand right in the face of your, uh, right in the face of adversaries and say, God going to do what God says he's going to do. God's going to be what God says he's going to be. I'm going to have what God says I'm going to have because God cannot lie. Oh, based on the promise. Somebody ought to get happy about that tonight because God's promised you some pretty big things. God's, God's made the promise. Somebody praise him. I'm not looking, amen, thank God, amen, for all the people who's prophesied over my life. But I tell you, I've been in prayer with God, and he's told me some pretty big stuff, and I'm going to bank on it, going to count on it, amen, and I'm going to believe it while I'm still on the backside of my desert. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him glory, and I'm going to be shouting, God's going to do what God is going to do. Somebody, somebody get a hold of that word. Let it be your anchor. Thank God. Don't let go of it. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to overlook the laugh. Sometimes you have to overlook the scorn. Sometimes you have to overlook the persecution. But you keep on standing on the promises of God that will not, can not fail. Abraham believed God. Amen. He had confidence. Amen. He had faith in what God had said. He held on to, to, to it until the day Sarah had a son whose name meant laughter. Woo. <laughs> Somebody hit me preach. She had that baby. Amen. And his name, Isaac, means laughter. Oh, glory to God. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Uh, Abraham's faith overrode Sarah's laugh. The last life was on her. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And the worst thing about it, she had to have the baby. Hit me preach in this house. Uh, hit me preach. Life's life was on Sarah. Confidence, faith is not inherited. I want to say that again. Confidence, faith is not inherited. It's not something I can hand over to my kids, my grand grandbabies. I can I can uh, teach them faith, and and they can learn faith. They can grow in faith. Amen. Because faith is developed. Amen. You don't inherit it. It's developed. Faith, uh, faith don't come from you. Paris, hello? Faith, faith is not something your parents can just hand over to you. Now, they can teach and develop it, like I said. Amen, but they can't. It's something you've got to grow for yourself. Faith and confidence grows as you grow. Whoo, how's your faith standing right now? How high is your faith right now? Amen, now, I'm telling you something. It ain't, uh, thank God it ain't according to, 
to uh, my faith. It's according to your faith being unto you. I'll use my faith and we'll get in agreement. I'll exercise my faith with your faith. But let me tell you, amen, if you want something from God, the Bible says it's according to. Somebody look at your name and say it's according to your faith. I'll join my hand with you and I'll get in agreement with you. We'll stand on the word of God, but it's going to also take your faith. Amen. I can pray all day. Just like I was preaching this morning, Jesus lived in Nazareth when he was a little boy. He was raised there in Nazareth. And he walked among those people and he was a mar I'm telling you, thank God Jesus was had, had the power inside of him present to heal anybody. But some of them didn't receive in his own hometown. It was his own kin people. I'm going to tell you something. Hey, man, you, <laughs> it's hard to have faith in your own kin people when you lived around them every day, eat beans and taters with them. Help, Help me preach. Hey, Amen. Work with them every day. Talk to them every day. Hey, Amen. Sometimes you can get used, you know, calm. And, uh, 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 why is it? I don't understand, but Jesus in his own, he, he, he said a, a prophet's not received among his own kin people, among his own friends. Amen. He wasn't received there uh, around those that was familiar with him because they thought of him as just the carpenter's son. As long as you see Jesus as just the carpenter's son, you won't receive his miracle. Somebody help me pray. I just, I just got that, Lord. My God, as long as you still see him as Mary's little baby, Mary's little lamb, you'll never get your miracle. But when you see him as your healer, hallelujah, you see him as your redeemer. You see him as your Holy Ghost baptizer. You see him as your sanctifier. Somebody lift your hands and say, I receive, I receive. Somebody say, I believe. Hey. <laughs> Woo, I see him as he dies on the cross, is buried, and resurrects. Woo, I see him as king of kings and lord of lords and god of gods. Hallelujah. Somebody, you've got to see him as he is. Who do men say that I am, Peter? Jesus said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, according, thank God, to that revelation, you're, I'm going to build my church. Somebody help me. The more you know about Jesus is the more he'll reveal of himself to you. The more, my God, the more you'll receive from him. Tonight. Somebody praise him. This is sad to say, but the majority of the churches today has just received him as Lord and Savior. But honey, there's a whole lot more to Jesus. You need to go to the next stage. You need to go to the next level and see him your Holy Ghost baptized. See him your healer. See him as your provider. Jehovah Jireh. I was thinking about it. I got up early this morning burning in my spirit with some thoughts. Jesus carried our sins, our iniquities. He carried our sorrows. He carried our griefs. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, mm, somebody get that tonight. Oh, my, 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 somebody be healed right now in Jesus. And with his stripes, ye were healed. I, I see him as my healer right now. If you have, haven't never received him beyond just being your savior to get you to heaven to put your name in the book of life, you need to get beyond that and say I receive him right now as my Hosanna, my coming king, my Lord, my God. You need to see him, hey amen, as your healer. Thank God. And when you see him as a healer, how many it received him as healer? I want to go deeper than that. He's my Holy Ghost baptizer. He, amen, he's the author of every gift that God ever, amen. He, he's the author of the gifts and thank God the power of God. And not only that, he's the author of our prosperity. If Jesus carried my sorrows and my griefs and my pains and sickness, why should I have to carry them also? If he bore them, why should I bore them? Somebody praise him right now. He bore it. He bore it. Somebody say amen. Somebody need to get that revelation. If he did it, why do I have to do it? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank God for these songs. I know, I know they mean well, but they're, they're saying songs like I should have been crucified. No, you shouldn't have. 
your blood wouldn't have done a thing. Your, your sacrifice wouldn't have meant a thing. Oh, no. He was the one that was crucified. Thank God he was the supreme sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And let me tell you, God accepted his blood. One time he had to enter in with his own blood. Amen. And he, thank God, took care of all the sin promise uh, problems on the cross just before he bowed his lovely head and died. He said, it's finished. Ain't nobody going to have to put another lamb on this altar. Somebody Somebody lift your hand and say, it's a finished work. It's a finished work. If you'll accept that tonight, you can be saved. Thank God it's a finished work. Those 39 stripes, I was reading about it this morning. Old Roberts put a Bible out back many, many, many years ago, and some woman bought it, and I found it at a yard sale. <laughs> Woo, God hooked me up with somebody come and got me. They saw all that old Roberts stuff. I believe it was Larry Killian. He saw all that old Robert stuff, and it was stacked up, big old tapes, all kinds of tapes and Bibles and books. Amen. And he come and got me and took me over. I bought lock, stock, and barrel. Let me tell you, I've listened to so much old Robert. Let me tell you, but he's got a Bible. It's, uh, it's the real leather. I'm telling you, it's still alive as it was when they pulled it off the bull's back. Amen. I'm telling you, it's still working. Amen. It's still healthy. Amen. It's probably got some power of God in it, too. I was reading in his commentary early this morning about how they beat him, how they beat him. His face was marred. I'm telling them they beat him so bad his, you, you wouldn't have recognized him. His own mother wouldn't recognize him. They beat his back so bad with a cat of nine tails, ripped, ripped the skin out of his back down to the bone. I'm, I'm going to say it again. This makes the enemy mad because it really happened. They took that cat of nine tails that had rock and bone and glass in the end of it and steel. And that, that soldier, he would practice to kill people. That was his job. He was not supposed to let anybody leave the whipping post alive. They were supposed to leave it dead. They were supposed to rip them off of it and took them and threw them in a grave. But not Jesus. Nine stripes went over his back. And that man was trained to wrap that whip around their bodies. And, and the, like claws in a bird, it would rip into the, those nine tails would, would just dig into their bodies. And the soldier was trained to pull it. And when he'd pull it, he would rip. Some, some men died because all of their intestines would empty out on the ground. Some would die because they'd ripped the rib cages open and they couldn't breathe. Some of them would get their eyes actually ripped out of their eye, uh, out of the socket while they was, come on, somebody praise your Savior. He did all this for you. Lord spoke to me one time, said it's an awful thing to walk up to the foot of the cross and see all that Jesus did and reject it. I accept every bit of it. I accept it all. Somebody lift your hand and praise him for what he did. Love him for what he did. Love him for what he did. Love him for what he did. Somebody praise him. 600 soldiers marched around him and spit on him. Can you imagine being spit on by five people? Can you imagine 600 coming by and just spitting right in his face? Can you imagine that? And they ripped his beard. The Bible said they ripped his beard out of his face. I don't know how it would feel to get a beard ripped out. I know how it feels, amen, to pull a little uh, twig or two here and there. It hurts. But can you f imagine them taking his beard and ripping it? God help. This ain't no fairy tale that really happened. They ripped his beard out of his face. Oh my. They took a crown of thorns. Thorns always represented curse. That's where the thorns come up in the Garden of Eden. You know, uh, uh, when Adam and Eve fell, the curse came. And there was thorns, thistles, and briars come on the scene. It was a sign of the curse. They took that, those thorns and they weaved them together. And they put them on the king of king's head. Then they took a reed and beat it down in his skull. And the blood began to pour. Let me tell you, Jesus didn't do that just to 
to show off. He, he didn't do that just to talk about. It. He did that from my mind. Somebody ought to put your hand on your head and said, he gives me a sound mind. Love and power and a sound mind. That's why he did it. And also, he took the cur that was representing the curse. And when that curse went down on Jesus' head and went into his skull, the curse, when that blood hit it, it killed that curse. Somebody praise him right now. The Bible said that he become a curse. On that cross, he took every curse. That's why the devil, ain't, he can't, he's not allowed to curse me. I'm covered in the blood. Somebody, somebody praise him that the devil can't put his curses on you unless you give him a reason. You give it a cause. You open a door, then he'll walk in. Let me tell you, as long as you live as close to God as you can, the devil can't come through the blood. He cannot curse you. I don't care what they say. They can't curse you. They can't put an X on you, hex on you, a spell on you. I am devil proof. Somebody hit me preach. Whew, can't put no curse on me. You can't curse a blessing. Balaam tried to get Balak or Balak tried to get Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And he went out there one day, and I don't know if he thought he could do it or not, but he walked out there and just looked at him. He, sa he said to himself, he, and he went back, and he told Balaam, said, there ain't no way I can curse them people. God won't let me curse them. Somebody say, God won't let the devil curse you. Come on. Are you, somebody praise God tonight. That's good news tonight in this devil-possessed world that the enemy cannot put a curse on me because I have applied the blood to the lintel post, side post. Somebody plead the blood. Somebody praise him tonight for the blood. Let's activate the blood. Somebody praise God for the blood. Jesus said, when I see the blood, God said, you tell him when I see the blood. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Somebody thank him tonight for the blood. Yeah, you want to spook a spook, say, Jesus, I plead your blood. Somebody praise him. Jesus become a curse that what? That the blessings of Abraham. Somebody shout that the blessings of Abraham may come on the Gentiles. How many Gentiles we got in here tonight that's been adopted into the family of God? Hallelujah, you're blessed. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Somebody shout, you can't curse me. Huh? Somebody let the enemy know you're blessed. You're blessed. Hallelujah. And anybody who tries to curse you will be accursed. Somebody throws a stone at you, it'll come back at them. Somebody rolls a stone toward you, it'll come back on them. Somebody digs a pit for you, they're going to fall in it. Hit me preaching this. Somebody builds a, a gallow to hang you on, they're going to hang on it. Hey, somebody hit me preach in this house. That's good news. Hallelujah. Somebody speak death over you. They better be careful. I will come back on them. Help me preach in this house. Somebody praise him. You can't, you can't curse that that God's blessed. And I can't bless that that's cursed. Help me preach in the house. Y'all getting any of this tonight? Let me, let me go a little farther with this. I, I might not get to preach all these notes. I've got a bunch of them, so I might not get to go back to that. But somebody say amen. Somebody, somebody want the Holy Ghost to keep preaching through me? Somebody say, bring it on, Holy Ghost. Bring it on. I could see Jesus after the scourging. They took him and made him carry his cross. He carried that cross. Finally got to the place where they crucified him. They laid the cross down on the ground, laid Jesus on it. They pulled that hand out there just as far as they could. Then they pulled that hand just as far as they could. Then they put his feet in a, uh, pulled his body down and drove, drove nails through his feet. So he was hanging there in agony. Help me, Holy Ghost. He was hanging there on the cross. A lot of people that were crucified they didn't last long because when they was hanging on the cross, he would, he would fall down. He'd get weak in his legs and begin to slump, slump, uh, fall down, and it would put pressure on his lungs. 
and he couldn't breathe. He'd start suffocating. He would, he would start suffocating. So he was on that cross, and he'd stand as, as long as he could, and he would fall. Then he'd start suffocating. Then he'd push himself up to take the pressure off of his lungs. And the pain would go into his feet and his ankles and his legs. And then he would begin to weaken and go down and up and down and up and down until they died. Jesus suffered. Listen, when he begged for water, they took vinegar and they put it on the thing and put it up to his lips. That vinegar, if you study that, it wasn't actually real vinegar. What it was was a painkiller. Jesus could have took some of that painkiller and eat some of his pain, but Jesus refused to. Somebody praise God. He suffered it all. He, he died on that cross. Amen. And oh, oh my, my. Finally, the time came when he gave up the ghost. He died. They stuck that spear into his side and pulled it out. The blood and the water came. You know when a woman has a baby, blood and water comes, don't it? Yeah. What happened that day when the blood and the water came? The church was born. <laughs> Woo! Somebody shout, the church was born. Somebody shout, the church was born. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, the church was born. Hallelujah. Somebody help me preach in this house. That's enough to make a, come on, that's enough to make somebody want to give a little Holy Ghost shout. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody give him a wave offering. Hallelujah. Friday was a rough day. Hell must have had a party. Hell must have had a celebration. Oh, but let me tell you, it wasn't too much of a party when Jesus went down into hell. He not only died, he went to hell for me. Now, we could go deep enough in this. I could, hey, man, I've, I've, I've studied it deep enough. I could go into some details. Jesus actually felt the flames. Some of y'all may not know that, but Jesus actually felt what hell would be like. He suffered, come on, just like a man going to hell. He took it all. He went to, he died like a natural man. reason Jesus had to come as a man because God couldn't die. So he had to come as a man in the natural and die like a man in the natural so his spirit could go down to the hearts of the earth. Amen. And when he went down there, help me preach in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the first time light ever went into hell. Ooh, you could see every cobweb. Let me pray. You, you could see every devil, every demon. And Jesus walked down through there, and there, I believe every devil of hell was screaming. Amen, and I believe that Jesus, uh, was, Jesus was kicking devils out of the way. Uh, get, 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 amen, just throw them every which way. In the, uh, and finally, the biggest demons come out. And Jesus said, you ain't who I'm looking for. I'm looking for the big man. Where's he at? He walks into where I, the, the devil was seated. He walks in there. And I believe he told the devil, he, I believe he said, you know what I'm here for? <laughs> you know what I'm here for? You might as well give them up. He said, give me the keys. Give me the keys of death, hell, and the grave. I'm taking all your authority right now. Keys are authority. He said, I'm taking all your authority today. I'm taking every bit that you had. You know, oh, you can't curse my people no more. You can't keep them bound no more. I'm going to take these keys. He said, give me the keys. And I believe the devil threw them at him and said, please just get out of here. Amen. And Jesus picked up the keys and walked out of there. And the devil hollered out over the intercom, I can't stop him. See if you grave, this grave see if you can stop him. Death, can you stop him? Can you hold him? Death says, I can't stop him. Hell said, I can't stop him. The grave said, I can't stop him. Hey, ain't nobody going to, huh? He come out of there. Oh, somebody give the Lord praise. He come out with the keys. Oh. He come out with those keys. And he designated, he gave them to us. He didn't take them to heaven with him. He laid them at, at the church's feet and says, whatever you bind on earth with them, be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, be loose in heaven. I give you the keys to the kingdom. 
Somebody praise him right now that you got the key. Somebody lift up your hand like, I bind every devil right now, sickness, get out of here. I bind every devil, I bind every oppression, depression, devil right now, every suicide spirit, you get out of here. Somebody shout, I bind that devil right now. The devil that keeps people up at night, you're getting out of here. In Jesus' name, you let them go in the name of the Lord. Yeah, these keys are still working in 2020. God, put it in there and say, I, with his straps, I'm healed and open the door. Take those keys and chain the devil up with them. Whatever you bind will be bound in heaven. Amen. Bind that devil. Rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Amen. And make him, make him let go of everything that belongs to you. Church, we're going to rise up and we're going to become what we're supposed to be. Walk in our authority. Hallelujah. Y'all getting any of this tonight? How many's enjoying the word of God? See, this, this, that. I wondered why this morning the Lord put some of this on my heart. I got my notepad out and I started, usually when I start getting thoughts, I start writing, but this morning, some reason, I just couldn't get to writing it, so God wrote it on my heart anyway. Woo, and I'm giving it right now. Somebody receive it right now. Somebody get up on your feet and move them a little bit and say, I bind the devil. Come on. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Somebody needs to take your authority. Somebody praise him. Jesus come up out of that grave. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. He ate with the disciples. Hallelujah. Woo. He confirmed to them that I am the Savior. He met with 500 of them at one time in the book of Acts. Amen. Then, and, oh, amen. Let me tell you, he, just before he went back to heaven, he turned around to them and he said, boys, it's expe uh, he, he said that uh, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost to you, so I want you to go over to Jerusalem for a few days and tarry there. Amen. He said, I'm going to pour my spirit on you. My Lord and Jesus started floating away woo, on the cloud. And the Bible said that same Jesus <laughs> you saw go away, he's coming in the same like manner. Yeah. One day, yeah. very soon, he's coming back on the clouds of glory. My Lord, my God, hallelujah, he's coming back. I don't think it's going to be too long till we're going to see the king of glory. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, go ahead and praise him your own way just for a minute. Come on and praise him for a little bit. Get as loud, shout, clap, waves, dance, run. Whatever God tells you to do, just do it right now. We're in an atmosphere right now. The Bible said there was infallible proof that Jesus had risen from the grave. How can we know he's alive today? Honey, he lives in my heart. Yes, thank God. How many's glad he's alive? He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Thank God he's alive. Somebody praise him. On the day of Pentecost, when it was full of came, they were all with one accord in one place. Thunder come a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like the fire set upon each of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise him. There's proof today he's still alive. The Holy Ghost is in the same spirit. I think I get excited sometimes when I think the same spirit. That same spirit that got Jesus up, that same spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost, he lives with us people. Oh, somebody ought to thank him. What a privilege it is to be the temple, the ark of the Holy Spirit. Somebody will get it. My Lord, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God this thing's going to wrap up. Can the church say amen? amen? Let me speak this over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I speak. Release it. Woo. Hey. Because of what Jesus did, I'm blessed. 
Because of what Jesus did, I can be healed. Because of what Jesus did, I don't have to go to hell. Because of what Jesus did, I don't have to be tormented by demon spirits at night. Help me preach in this house. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hell, it it, it is. Oh, my, 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 my. Somebody praise God. Praise God. How many feels it in here tonight? Can somebody give him praise? Can somebody give him praise? Some of y'all have thought things was over. It's a done deal. But, honey, I can tell you, from this time last Sunday to this Sunday, I've saw God do some things. Let me tell you, by this time next week, there'll be some other infallible proofs that God's still on the throne and that he still answers prayer. I see miracles coming right now. Release your faith on it. 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 Amen. I'm not going to be able to preach this, all of this tonight. I'm going to just back it up and give it to you Thursday, probably the rest of it if you want, or, or Sunday, Sunday. I don't know when that Holy Ghost gets ready for the rest of it, but I'll tell you, I thank God for the part we got tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody thank him. Somebody love on him right Thank God for the nails in his hands. You know, Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father right now. And when we get to glory, we're going to see right through those holes in his hands. Those hands never did go back together. No, he left them with holes in them. So one day we'd get to see what he did. His feet has holes in it. His back has scars. God spoke to me one day. He said, son, every once in a while, I'll look to my son's back and I see those scars. And I heal somebody just despite that devil. Come on, somebody. Would you need it? Do you need a healing tonight? With faith. With faith. With confidence. This is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he'll give us our potential. Is it his will to heal? Of course. Is it his will to feel? Of course. Is it his will to bless? Of course. He's a heavenly father. I'm glad when I preach about Jesus around here, it still rises tears in here. I see people wiping them away. Some people don't cry. That's no sign. Amen. If you're not crying, that Jesus don't live in there. But I tell you, it's good to see people cry every once in a while about a river that's on the inside. And I tell you, like one old preacher said, he said, as long as my head leaks, tears, my head will never swell. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, with all my heart, I want to be real. With all my heart, I want to give you the real praise. From the abundance of my heart, I praise you. Lord, I love you. I praise you. I glorify you. Lord, if there's anybody in this building tonight whose backslid, if anybody's got cold, if anybody's about to give up, Lord, there's people in here tonight that's about ready to give up. There's some of them that's lost all hope. Hell knocked them full of hose last week. Oh, they're battling, Lord, to, to, to stay afloat. If it had went by the way they felt, they wouldn't even been here tonight. But God, you love them so much. You love them so much. You love them so much. Lord, I know as just a pastor, Lord, the love you put in my heart for these people. I can't imagine how you love them. The Bible said, greater love have no man than this, that he would die, actually die for his friends. Lord, you love them so much that you died for them so much. Lord, I feel like there's somebody in here, several people in here tonight, Lord, who needs a breakthrough. Their world is shattering. Lord, if they don't get a hold of themselves, God, honest to God, I know, I, I know. Lord, you've been telling me stuff, and Lord, it's been falling right in place. Everything I've whispered in the ears of Lisa, it's been happening. And Lord, there's some people in here tonight, and I've got to say it while they're still here. If they don't get a hold of themselves, if they don't get on this altar and get real with God and quit playing church, they're going to get suicidal in the next few days. Why would God tell you that, preacher? I don't know. I, I don't think I'm, I know it all. I'm just telling you what I hear in my spirit. Do y'all want to hear what that said the Lord? Has anybody ever heard this before? 
Have we ever seen anything like that? Come on, we've seen it time and time again. There's, some, there's not one or two, but there's several people in here tonight who's been beat up so bad that you feel like they ain't even no use to even try anymore. Let me tell you something. It can get worse, and it will get worse if you don't get a hold of God tonight. I, f I was going through my mind today, and I'm hearing things, oh, it saddens my heart. People who God gave time and time and time and chance at her chance at her chance to get right but said no to the Holy Ghost and played around too long, messed around with demons too long and wouldn't get right with God. And, and now today, God's Holy Ghost won't even let me pick my phone up and call them. God's, God's told me, don't, don't even try. There's no use. Just don't even bother them no more. That happens from time to time when the Holy Ghost quits dealing Well, if you're in that shape tonight, you know who you are. And you know you better make a U-turn tonight. Somebody say make a U-turn. A U-turn. It's you. Somebody hit me preaching. This. Somebody needs to make a U-turn. Let, let me tell you something. I'm in my right mind tonight. I'm sane tonight. Amen. But let me tell you something. If God ever withdrew his spirit from me, they better put a straight jacket on me. I wouldn't know how to live without Jesus. Some tried to, they've tried it without him. They, they, they've tried this, that, and the other. It ain't working, is it? It don't work. I've got to have Jesus. Some people don't believe that they can go one day too long and uh, across the finish line and God never speak to them again. Honey, I could, I, I'm not going to tonight, but I could give you a list of experiences I've had with people who played around with God, thinking that they could keep going back, keep going back, keep, keep repeating, repeat. And then God says, it's over. Bible says, and when your calamities come, he said, I called and I called you with an answer. He said, there'll be a day you'll call. And I'll laugh at your fears when they come. Oh, that sounds mean. That sounds bad. But let me tell you, when God's calling, that's when the answer. Today is the day of salvation. Next week may never come. We've had them sit on these pews. A amen. And actually say, I'll go to the altar next Sunday. I've had people to tell me, I'll, be, I'll, I'll do this, that, and the other not be able to show up the next week. You don't make plans. You don't make God's plans for the days of day of salvation. If you want it, while heads is bowed, while nobody looks around, I might have you to put some music on in a minute, guys, but, but not right now. This is just a moment that I feel the Holy Ghost is walking the house in such a way.